Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to Hearts of Iron 4. Today, we're going to embark on a wonderful dream journey as Canada. We're going to make the world our ice rink. I hope you guys are ready for that today, because why would you play as one of these big established nations with all this quote unquote manpower? Who needs stuff like that? Technology. Screw that. We're going Canada. Now, my only my only question here is, are we going to play with historical on or off? If we leave historical off, that leaves a whole bunch of weird things that can happen. I've seen France go fascist and join the Axis. I've seen France go communist and join the commentary. I've seen weird stuff happen with historical off. I, let, let's try it. Let, let's just leave it off this time and let's see what kind of fun junk happens. Because we're not playing in Europe, right? So who cares what happens in Europe? Yeah, 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 that's fine. Let's leave it off. Let's see what happens in Europe. It'll be like a surprise to everyone. Not quite as good a surprise as Europe reveals in Heart in uh, Europa Universalis 4, where it's like fog of war up until you discover Europe and then, oh my goodness, Europe's crazy. But it'll still be surprising what sort of stuff happens. I think the only drawback, and this is this is actually a pretty big drawback, the only drawback with historical off is that Poland is pretty much guaranteed to form the Midzimors with the Baltic states here. So he's going to form his own alliance with these three guys. And uh, that just means Poland won't be in the Allies. And that means Germany won't be fighting Britain and France when he declares on Poland. That's pretty much the only difference. But it is a pretty significant difference. Anyway, so let's focus on Canada. Now, Canada gets a lot of bad rep for having a low population and a lot of snow. And they're, they're apologizing for everything all the time. And some even call them America's hat. Well, we're sick of being America's hat. We will no longer live up to that reputation. Today, today we stop being America's hat. First and foremost, you must take our cavalry and form the mighty RCMP. Who's going to lead the RCMP? John Montague. Yes, siree, Bob. John, you will captain the RCMP. If you don't know what they are, they are the Royal Canadian Mountain Police. And you guys will be, I don't know, just over here somewhere. Just go chill on the U.S. border. And our main army, consisting of eight soldiers. Nice. Uh, let's put you in Charles Folk's lovely embrace. We'll call you um, Canadian Defense. Uh, just Canadian Defense? Canadian, def Canadian Defenders? Sure. Canadian Defenders. There you go. There you go. We'll give you a nice, a nice Canadian color. There you go. Beautiful red. And the uh, the RCMP can be, I don't know, pink. It's not too similar, is it? That's a little too similar. We'll make it yellow. Yellow. There you go. Okay. Now the Canadian defenders are going to be chilling over here in these two states. We have Southern Ontario and St. Lawrence. Also have Quebec, Northeastern Canada, Northern Canada, Northwestern Canada, British Columbia, Vancouver Island, Haida Gwaii, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, New Brunswick, and Nova Scotia. Now, unfortunately, we do not start with Labrador and Newfoundland. Those are under British control. But at least we're not a puppet, right? If this was Victoria too, we'd be a puppet. No one wants to be a puppet. At the start of the game, Britain's only puppet is the Raj. However, we are in the Allies. And that's where this gets a little bit interesting. I have a choice to make. So at some point, we're going to stop being America's hat. We're going to declare on the USA. It's, it's going to happen. Afraid so. But I have to decide, do I want to stay in the Allies when I declare on the US? Or do I want to leave the Allies when I declare on the US? Because... That's a big decision. If we stay in the Allies, it means the US can't join the Allies. Fair enough, it means they're forced to just be their own faction. They can't they can't uh, join any other faction that way. However, if we leave the Allies and declare on the US, then that means the US has the option to join the Allies. And I'm not sure if that would be good or bad. I don't know. I'll think about it. Not sure what we want to do with that yet. First things first though, we are definitely going 
the way of manpower. And if you have to choose out of all these wonderful ethics over here, which side to go for? Well, sometimes it's based entirely on what nation you're playing. If you're playing a nation with no manpower, then you might as well go fascist because there's 7% manpower over here in military youth and militarism. If you go communist, you get a bunch of political power points. That's not that powerful, honestly. And if you go liberty, you get nothing. You get nothing. There is no benefit to go liberty. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to go get some manpower over here. Goodness gracious. Uh, we do start out with 1936 rifles. Uh, we have a couple support items, including engineers and recon companies. We even start with the light tank one. Not bad. Oh, look at this. We have some neat names for our tanks as well. The Valentine, the Ram, the Grizzly, and the Mark III. Now, we all know all about the Mark III, right? We learned about that in history class. And the HT. Oh, boy. HT3 and the SH tank. Woof. Those are some heavy hitters out there. We do start with some 1922 boat technology for destroyers, cruisers, and that's it. Ha, ha, ha. Uh, we have naval bombers. Okay. We don't even have electric mechanical engineering. Okay, well, let's get that right away. And let's also get basic machine tools. And uh, let's upgrade our tanks. All right. Because we are building tanks. Yeah, we are. And the tanks are actually in our district militia setup here. This is actually a very interesting division. It's nine infantry and a tank. Just a random tank thrown in there because apparently Canada had tanks in 1936. I didn't know that. So this is no longer going to be district militia. This is going to be uh, provincial. Uh, provincial. Oh, I don't even know. Provincial regiment. All right, rename, there you go. And cavalry militia, no, 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 no. Mounties. Three cav, man, that is a sad division. <laughs> There's like nothing in it. All right, let's get some new soldiers out and about. Put them in our capital. And you guys can join the main army. Let's see. I want to get some support equipment. I want to get... We already have that tank. I don't think we want to do airplanes. Not yet. Uh, let's get some convoys. We have one whole naval factory and five military factories, along with 13 civilian factories, although half of them are used for consumer goods. Uh, let's get some more military factories going. And we'll probably put in some civilian factories as needed. We do need to import some steel. Let's import from, I don't know, Sweden. They're neutral. I like neutrality. And that should do. All right, let's get going. It's time to play Canada, baby. Mm, mm, mm. Canada. Oh, that's right. You know what else we have as Canada? Uh, other, than, other than 24 planes, which we're going to disband. Other than 24 planes, we also have two Tech 1 destroyers. That's right. That's our fleet. Two Tech 1 destroyers. Now, if your fleet is two Tech 1 destroyers, how many admirals do you think you start with? Anyone? Anyone? That's right, baby. You start with two level four admirals. Oh yeah. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh boy, it's so good. I'm gonna split the fleet. I'm gonna put one level four admiral with one destroyer up there and one level four admiral with one destroyer down there because that totally makes sense. It totally makes sense. All right, come on up here, boys. We're just gonna go hide in Hudson Bay. <sighs> Why do we have two boats and two level four admirals? I don't know. Just do that. <laughs> Oh, man. Ah, so I wonder what kind of weird stuff's going to happen now that we have historical off. This is one of the nice things about historical off is it kind of gives you a, a sense of mystery. Like, what's going to happen? Is Europe going to go crazy? Oh, well, the answer is probably yes. 
Historical off typically means Europe goes crazy. Yeah, we're lacking oil, but the only thing we're using oil for is our uh, convoys. So I'm not going to bother. Well, the only thing we're missing oil in is the convoys. I don't really care how long those take to build. All right, now I'm tempted to start exercising some of you guys, but I don't think we have all of our equipment, do we? No, we're missing infantry equipment. Yeah, I don't want to exercise unless we actually have equipment. Missing equipment and light tanks. Yeah. So we these are the troops we start with. And they have nothing. They have no guns, no tanks, no nothing. So we actually have to start from nothing and just build up an army. We start with manpower, essentially. Which is, it's, it's funny because Canada has like no manpower at all. But that's all we start with. We start with all these pre-built units that have no guns, no nothing. All right, so we can't go collectivist yet. Let's go industrial. Uh, we can't go collectivist until we actually flip to fascist. So that'll take some time. As soon as we get... Oh, we have points. Okay, let's hire an advisor here. Chuck Crate, driven by a will to unite the people under a strong state, this politician emphasizes nationalist and militarist rhetoric. Well, Chuck, welcome abroad, sir. And I'm not interested in a civil war, so we'll just let the higher-ups take care of it. Reichstoban. Government reform. Limited rearmament. Ooh. Britain's getting ready for war. The Spanish Civil War should happen soon as well. What's the USA up to? What you up to, Franklin Delano Roosevelt? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That is really quick. I've never seen Italy take over Ethiopia that fast. Good job, Italy. Good job, Italy. Oh, he's working on the neighbors. Oh, he's going to influence us. You jerk. Do you know how difficult it is to flip the fascist if he starts influencing us? <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's such a bully. So right now, since we have this advisor, Chuck Crate, we are slowly drifting towards fascists, right? Let's see. Where is our little pie chart here? There we go. Yeah, we're slowly getting there. But as soon as he starts, uh, as soon as he starts influencing us, we're going to get democratic bonuses. Right now, we're going at 0.1 per day. Which is very quick. That means every month we're going to be getting more than 3% fascism. But when he finishes the neighbors here, I believe it's a plus 0 0.05 democracy per, per day? Or is it per month? I don't remember. It, it's a slow push towards democracy. If it's per day, it's going to make it take a long time to go fascist. But if it's per month, it's probably not going to be such a problem. Just ignore it. All right, our first military factory is done. It just finished. Nice, nice, nice. Keep on building those guns. Mm-hmm. There it is. U.S. influence. United States advocation for democracy is starting to affect our country. Radio broadcasts allow speeches from FDR to reach our people, and we have found many Canadians being attracted to the American way of life. Canada is no puppet, nor will we allow our politics to be dictated by the USA. However, we cannot deny the influence that American politics have in our country. Well, just put up, a, put up a wall or something. Don't let those radio signals come across the border. That's no good. Let's go, uh, let's go get some more civilian factories. And concentrated industry one. Sounds good to me. Damn it, USA. All right, so how is that affecting us? Oh, it's just ideology drift defense. That doesn't bother me at all, does it? No, it has no effect at all. This only protects against outside influence. So if someone like Germany was trying to boost our fascism, then this would protect us by 50% lowering their impact of boosting fascism. But since this is an internal boost of fascism, this US influence has no effect. You can see it's still going up by 0.1 per day. Yep, no effect. Nice. Very nice. Does the ratio change when you get over 20% fascist? I'm not sure when the when it changes, like what the threshold is, but yes. The boosting of fascism or whatever ideology slows down as you gain more support. And eventually, I think the slowest it can go is like 0 0.01. So eventually it gets real slow. Okay, light tank two is ready to rock. 
don't really need weapons just yet. So why don't we focus more on like, um, yeah, let's focus more on construction and swap out the tanks. Very nice. Oh, we're at our limit on steel. We're going to have to import some more steel here pretty soon. Do we have aluminum? We do. Okay, so we're not going to import aluminum. Let's just go ahead and import some more steel. Just get it out of the way so I don't forget. All right. Civilian factory done. Let's get another civilian factory. It's just one here and there. It's not a big deal, but we're still going to do it. Oh my goodness, we're actually building troops. The Spanish Civil War has kicked off. Oof. Okay. Fascism versus communism in Spain. We've heard that story before, but who's going to win? I don't know. Yeah, we've almost finished our first recruit. Look at that. Just waiting for a couple more tanks. And the games, the, the Olympic Games in Berlin are done. Nice. All right, so I just want to go straight for more construction here. Is there anything else I want? That doesn't require... I guess I could start doing my doctrine. Yeah, let's just get some doctrine going. We're going to do mobile warfare. Why mobile warfare? Because it gives us the choice of getting 5% more recruitable population. It gives you 5% more manpower. Or getting really powerful tanks. Those are your two choices. And both options are really good. But considering our manpower is such a problem, we probably go get that 5% manpower. There's two places you can get 5% manpower. One of them is here in Mobile Warfare. These two give you 5% manpower. Or you can also go to Mass Assault and get 5% manpower somewhere down here. No, no, no. There it is. Yeah, Recruitable Population 5%, Human Weight. But I'm just not a fan of Mass Assault. These two doctrines I just don't care for. And it's just personal preference, probably. We're low on manpower? No kidding. Wow. Thanks for letting me know, game. You're low on manpower. Well, I'm playing Canada. France and Britain announced alliance. Okay. Um, let's get more civilian factories. And Stalin has finished the Great Purge. Which means... Well, a lot of his uh, advisors and generals and stuff are probably dead now. Just hide them under a bookshelf. No one, will, no one will notice they're missing. Oh, let's get some more manpower. Yes. Oh, so good. Manpower. Manpower. Queue up some more recruits, please. Goodness, we need so many more tanks. Our production is so low. <laughs> Fascist sympathizers in the military. All right, so now that we've passed 20% support, it's taking twice as long to boost it now. So instead of 0.1 per day, it's 0.05 per day. That's a big slowdown, isn't it? Oh, well. How's that civil war going, Spain? Oh, the communists are losing hardcore. They already lost Madrid. They got some pocketed units here. Those guys are going to die. Yep. Another pocket here in Malaga. And another pocket. Oh my goodness, these communists are getting crushed. It's not even fair. It's not even fair. Let's get the radio. No, 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 no. Let's get, um... Let's get motorized. The Ford F-30. And we can modify our governments. Uh, I think what we're going to do is get a military theorist. This will give us some army experience points. We can use that to start modifying our troops. Which is very important because we have the technology for support equipment, including engineers and recon. We have that already researched, but we can't use it because we don't start with any army experience. So we can't add them to our units. They're sitting there, but we can't use them. Kind of silly, isn't it? Okay, more civilian factories, please. Yeah, there goes those troops in Malaga. Goodbye. Oh, now the Nationalists got pocketed. Look at this. This is a pocket. They could easily die there. How many troops do both sides have? 
The nationalists have, let's say, 35. And the communists have about 30. Oh, I guess it's still pretty even. All right, construction one is done. And it's now 1937, which means we can just go straight into more construction. Yeah, early on, it's just all about research and construction. The rest, eh, whatever. Come on, why don't you deploy? Oh, he still needs tanks. Um, I could just force deploy them. I'm not going to do that, but I could. All right, let's lower our gun production and increase our tank production. And let's import some oil from Russia. Sure. Because we're caught up on guns. Yeah, we're good on guns. We just need tanks. Wow, Malaga's really holding strong. I'm impressed. Oh, there's four divisions there, that's why. The Pax Americana, looking into the conflicts of other continents. Alfland, oh, Alflanden. What happened to FDR? Well, I guess, I guess FDR is gone. We now have the Republican Party in charge with Alf Landon. Okay. Any government on the American continent may appeal to the USA for military protection. All right. So they're going to protect the entire continent, are you? Are you? Let's get our extra research slot. Don't tell us what to do, USA. You ain't the boss of me. Who do you think you are? Oh, we need more steel. Sweden. Gotta love that Swedish steel, man. He's trying to boss everyone around. That's no good. Can't do that. Man, is this war ever gonna end? It seems like it's been forever. Oh, okay. The communists are down to about 26 units. And the fascists have more than 30. So yeah, the communists are really hurting now. Some of those pockets got crushed. And it's really put them behind on troop counts. Still waiting on those tanks, huh? I'm just going to spit you out. As much as I want to get them out non-green, because they, they spit out green if you don't uh, get them fully supplied. As much as I want them to be normals, uh, the problem with that is I just want to keep recruiting more guys. At some point, I just need more guys. There's never going to be enough guys. Oh, modify government. Industrial or electronics? Industrial or electronics? Um, hmm. Let's go industrial. And it's time to go fascist. Oh, yeah. Wow, we're only at uh, 31% and we just split fascist. Look at that. Fascist assault divisions form. National unity minus five. Recruitable population plus 0.2%. Sweet. All right, so we are now led by Adrian Arcand. Welcome abroad, sir. Welcome abroad. And we have the Reign of Terror. Political power points plus 10%. Nice. Okay, so the nice thing about being fascist is now we can go get all these wonderful, wonderful manpower over here. And we can also change out of toaster economy. As soon as the world reaches 15% tension, we can go get war economy, which is going to be fantastic for us. Meanwhile, keep building those tanks, you lazy people. Lazy people. I'm telling you, they're so lazy. I order them to build tanks. And they don't. They're just so lazy. Okay, mobile warfare has started. Let's go ahead and get some more. Organization plus 15. Can't go wrong with that. And there we go. Poland has announced their own faction. The Midzimors, or something like that. Yeah. Hindenburg disaster. No. That means Rudolf Hess can't fly the Hindenburg. Well, that's too bad. I want to see Rudolf on his finest flights over Scotland or wherever he went with the Hindenburg. Crazy man. But yeah, Poland's going to form his own faction. He's just going to die. I mean, this is the 
the sad part about Poland forming the Midsum Wars. He's just, just going to die. You know it. I know it. He's just going to die. Oh, is this the battle for Barcelona? It might be. That might actually end the war. If they can get Barcelona right now, that might end that war. Okay, we got the Ford F-350. Or was it F-30? Ford F-30. My bad. Which means we can get the field hospital. Absolutely necessary. Absolutely necessary. France, what the hell are you doing? I'm just going everywhere. Okay, just go everywhere then. That's all good. I guess you joined the Allies? Yeah, he joined the Allies. Okay, that's why I can see his troops all of a sudden. Alright, we're at 9 army experience. Now we can finally modify our troops. Let's get them some recon. Oh boy, look at that. We're missing 5,000 infantry equipment and 700 tanks. Well, it says we'll have enough tanks in 280 days and enough guns in 704 days. So let's increase our gun production. Oh, Earhart survives. The famous aviator Amelia Earhart, known to many as the Queen of the Air, has completed a flight around the world together with her navigator Fred Noonan. A ceremony will be held in the White House next week where Earhart is to be personally congratulated for her feat by the President. You mean Alf Landon? I mean, I guess, I guess you can celebrate it, but I don't know. Alf's not really a party animal. I'm not sure he's going to be down with uh, celebrations, you know? All right, extra research slot. Great. Now I have to decide, do I want the manpower now or do I want to get some more military factories? And I think the military factories come first. Because we're still able to recruit new troops. Yeah, our manpower is okay for now. Marco Polo Bridge Incident. Japanese and Chinese forces have skirmished inconclusively and Japan or China has rejected Japan's demands for territorial reparations. So Japan goes, hey, uh, we, we shot at each other across a bridge here. Uh, give us your three best states. And China's like, fuck off. You're just going to give away 39 million people, 18 million people, and 10 million people? I mean, come on. No, go fuck yourself. Right? That's what I would say. Oh, wow. Look at that. The communists have connected back to Malaga, so those troops are no longer going to die. He had four troops that were trapped here, and they're no longer trapped. Wow. That's an impressive turn of events. All right, extra research slot. What are we going to do with it? Let's get some construction going. Totally forgot that. Thankfully, it saves up 30 days worth of uh, research. You know what, though? We are out of time for the episode today. So thank you guys for watching. I have been Shen. You have been you. Come back next time where Poland will expand the Midsumors. And it looks like nationalist Spain will take out Republican Spain. Okay. Have a good day. Goodbye from Canada. Unitard Canada. <laughs> that needs to be a D. It just has to happen.